Oh, universe! If you're somebody who regularly listens to this diatribe of nonsense recording, <clears throat> well, I finally made a mistake I've never uh, made. And that is, I uploaded the shorter version of That Will Have Been One Hell of a Successful Day. The real version's 52 minutes and 52 seconds. The one that got online first is 4303. So if you don't have the 5252, we got some work to do. Yeah, I get it. That's not fair. You don't work for me. I can't just give you tasks and assignments. But I did go through all of the corrective work to get the right one up there so that only the first day three downloaders have to worry about this particular uh, snafu. But yeah, that's my fucking fault. It's not like I can come over to your house and re-download the episode, though. So, a little bit of initiative? Is that a better word? Pause. Hello, universe. Hey, you know what? We're in the bedroom. We've got the setup to put the microphone where it usually goes. Oh! And then I don't have to hold the damn phone or make contact with it. Oh, my God. This is going to be so much better for the audio performance considering the last week has been shit. Mostly because I've been throwing a phone around on my pillows. Well, I lie here with my face blowing up, which is still happening. As you'll know, I'm on my pillow, face blowing up. And so here here at this juncture <clears throat> is what I've come up with. First of all, my face is swollen. But the rest of my head swelling is kind of down. But my eyes are both open. Like, my eyes are noticeably not swollen. But around them... I mean, I look like I've got eyes sunken in an extra inch. It's bizarre. And I don't know if that's the blood moving around in my head. Okay, I don't even want to fucking find out. But that's what I'm experiencing. And I'm obviously not in a bad mood. This isn't really... This is both terribly nonchalant and really concerning at the same time. Because really all I've got is a swollen face, which I could have just gotten myself my ass kicked and I don't remember it. I literally had to have a moment there to think, wait, did that happen? Nope. I remember going to unlock my bike. I remember going home. I remember riding home. I remember thinking this is a harder ride home than usual, but riding my ass all the way home. And last but not least, um, what, what are we, I know we're talking about my swollen face, but I, I think I've made my point. So, Having uh, having now to rely on some medical insight to tell me what the best method of correction is, and I assume it's going to be antibiotics, but if it's uh, bone surgery, well, then we're going to slow it all down and say, well, hang on, hang on, I'm not sure I want to do that. And that's why I got on to talk right now. Because really, I shouldn't be talking. As a matter of fact, I'll say that most of my head swelling is down but I just rolled over on my ear and figured, oh, well, that's got to be my uh, my little earbud. And reached into my ear to pull out an earbud that's not there. Because my ear is swollen enough that just in a jar position, it feels like there might be something in my ear. So, let's knock out, what could this be? Family feud style. Okay, number one answer on the board. Uh, allergic reaction. Still could be. Because if it's other stuff, I feel like I should huh, maybe have more secondary uh, disadvantages. Like, if anything, I've dropped seven pounds. So I'm down, now a pound lighter than I was before I went on my uh, got to hibernate for a week and think. Jantra. But I wasn't really uh, out of control in the food category then. I was just not in control of anything. I was literally, uh, I was just punishing myself. Well, no, I wasn't punishing myself. I was purifying myself. Why am I speaking? Pause. Okay. So here's my current, um, it might totally be worth the moment. And that is... <laughs> Should I use the intake tomorrow to say, 
my dad's been kicking my ass my whole life. And I'm finally willing to stand up and say I'm a victim. Because I look like I got in a fucking fight, is what it looks like. It looks like somebody beat the shit out of me. I mean, it looks worse than that. So it's hard to believe that anybody who's walking in there in my condition would have anything other than fucking ice packs all over them. Because the pain should be brutal. And, I mean, I don't want you to put an ice pack on my face. But otherwise, it's alright. It's not terrible. But would that not be fucking hilarious? <laughs> my dad's 80... Uh, what year is it? He's 83 years old. Come on, that would be kind of fun. Wouldn't it? And it, to me, it would be fucking hilarious. Because he's never hit me an idiot... I mean, it's just... it's. There is no such back history. So... <laughs> the downside is, of course, that that would probably trigger River F Stream or Niagara Falls paperwork challenge to unwind myself from, but come on, it is funny. Although my dad's in pretty good shape for an 83-year-old guy. Maybe he could put me in this condition if he really gave his best go at it. Come on, old man, what you got? Pause. Okay, but why would I not want to succumb to the medical assistance to help counteract something pernicious like a brain tumor or a bone cancer or um, something um, that is um, potentially life-threatening. Well, A, I've been kind of thinking this might be the end of my life for a long time. And B, okay, and what's a long time? I'm, uh, this is something I was trying to figure out. Was When was the first time I knew I was walking past the life room? This was the, the first, one of those landmark dreams in my dream sequences was being brought into, sh almost like to be reminded of how much true knowledge there is in the universe compared to whatever stunted version of it we get here on the banana peel infested earth. But 8675309, Jenny, and... If you're going to, fuck man, I got so distracted by how funny I thought I just was that I gotta, I gotta re regroup. And no, not the Jenny fucking song reference. No, the banana peel earth. I just started seeing people slip it all over the earth. Okay. Yeah, I might be high. I found my little eyedropper shit. Well, I didn't find it. It was where I left it. And I used it. And I'm amused by it. Are the... Amused with me? I hope you say see. <laughs> Pause. Why did I... <clears throat> That's even worse. Okay, what if I brought my dad in on the joke? What if he thought it was funny enough that he was like, yeah, let's do it. If we get the right person, right intake guy, like some big brute. <laughs> you know, some some dude just looks like he'd kick, kick the shit out of both of us anyway. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to let go of this one yet. And yet, if it was something like an abscess to, I mean, if it's 10 grand worth of shit to get it all fixed, of course I want to fix it. But if it's 10 grand worth of processes to figure what it is now, well then, no, I really don't want to do that. If we can make whatever the current conditions are subside, and then I get to work on getting the broken teeth in my mouth fixed from never having my broken teeth removed. Which... Since they didn't come in until after I was, what, 38? Did they come in when I was 39? They came in either when I was 38 or 39. I don't remember now. So they've caused havoc in my life ever since. Hi, wisdom to you. Now, why did that happen? I don't know, but that's kind of the same time everything flipped upside down, so I've always wondered. So did my teeth have to break for all this fucking shit to happen? Okay. Which brings us to the real comedy fun situation that is here to be drilled down and maybe only tonight in other words this has to be recorded now because tomorrow it won't be it, it can't be funny well it's still gonna be funny but i can see why people would think i was fucking losing my shit if i was laughing at it and that is what if all this harmony, elegance, and synchronicity with the universe 
that has taken my life from a life of chaos to a life of true fulfillment. What if that's all just a brain tumor representing itself as giving me some fantastical mind fuck because I'm dead anyways? Yeah, what if? I'd never had this thought occur to myself. Not once. I mean, when I say, let's hope I'm crazy. It, w- it wasn't with the underpinning of, because sometimes I have these churling intuitions and thoughts of which I'm not sure how to deal and they might be crazy. No, it's always like, yeah, let's hope I am. But that means I have to be crazy up and down because never have I been so lucid. Listen to all my recorded material and find the craziness. I'm sure in 420 episodes, you're going to be able to come up with, well, I would hope, quite a bit of legitimate argument that, yeah, I might be a little nutty. But I'm not a lunatic. I'm not, my thought patterns aren't degenerative. My, my thinking is clear. My connections are more rapid. My, my seeing of the, the big picture is almost instantaneous. Everything that I hear that's a lie, I know. It, I mean, I'm, I'm equipped like I've never been equipped. Like a fucking crazy person with a brain tumor. Maybe. It's possible. But can we at least admit that this would be the first really good argument to get brain cancer? or whatever other severe malady might be causing my face to look like I got in a fight that I didn't get into. Or let's just hope it's my poor dental hygiene, because that will be the kind of karma that kicks me right back in the nuts like it should. Because one thing I will have to fix before I end my fucking time on Earth are my teeth. Otherwise, that sense of disregard and the ill health that comes with it will fucking carry on to the next life. And it's hard enough to get by in this universe, but without a super winning smile, well, has that been proven the most important thing in terms of overall life uh, accomplishment? Is your super winning smile, and then from there down, your lack thereof? Are you sure? You should go look up that article. And if it's a brain tumor, why are so many of the current, um, why are so many of the recent uh, cross connections the ones of great value? Like, is it is it coming to a, a peak here? Is my entire brain about to melt? Is this an entire amalgamation of everything that I ever was to delude myself to the point that I'm deluding myself three days away from death? That I'm still fine. In fact, never felt better. Yeah, I guess I could be that delusional. Maybe I'll go in and the doctor will look at me and say, you know what? I'm surprised you walked in here. You got two days to live. Max. And I would think impossible. From a swollen face? While the rest of me feels like I could... Well, I wouldn't want to... I mean, it's amazing how much you move your head. And to be honest, like, if I shake my head left and right, brrr, like, that's way too much action. That hurts. So, yeah, there's something wrong. But just in my face, and arguably my head, and in my lack of complete sustenance through this process. But other than that, fuck no. Do I sound different? Am I acting different? Well, I am because I haven't played any tennis or any golf or gone in a bike ride, but... That's not... Okay, that is partly because of this. So, if I went and got exercise tomorrow, would it feel overwhelming? Would it feel rejuvenating? Or rejuvenatingly overwhelming? Or overwhelmingly rejuvenating? Or why am I going to... No, I'm not going to do another one. Pause. And I'm not going to give any more attention to this particular situation than what you're going to hear right now. But my cat's definitely dying. In fact, the one thing that I can say of her current condition is it very much reminds me of when my cat 
at the age of 18, passed away in terms of the look and shape of her body. Her kidneys are failing, obviously. So, what I can do to love my cat tonight is important. But, uh, that means I'm pretty much watching her shit all the time right now. Because you know what that means? Cat blood, cat pee, cat... Uh -uh. Anyway, she deserves a little love. She also deserves a little straight talk. Pause. Oh, pause. Okay. So, the conundrum of when something bad has happened, is it better to target and execute revenge against the entity or forces that are causing said harm? <clears throat> Whoa. That's the first cough I felt in a while. But, or are you better off devoting your resources and energy to those left behind in the wake of the damage so that they can grab their lives back? And the answer is it's always number two. It's never actually number one. Because number one is just the extension of the chain that is the chain that chains up all the chain of emotional revenge across time and space. And it's never going away, so I don't want to pretend it doesn't need to be acknowledged. But chain breakers <clears throat> are things like um, compassion, um, camaraderie. Um, and they don't all start with C. Let's see if I can come up with in the second half of the alphabet. Wisdom. Um, sorrow. And sorrow is a weird one because it can go both ways. Well, let's not get into sorrow. I don't want to talk sorrow. Um, sorrow is a really complex emotion. That's the last thing I'm saying about sorrow. I'm not feeling any. Um, <clears throat> but chain extension is just how the world works. The forces in play are moving the pieces along. They're creating links on the chains. They're looking as if they come from eternity. They don't. Hell, they're not even... They don't. There is no eternal... Well, okay, there are some. Uh, all right, I'm not trying to lose track. And that's harder than I thought it was going to be on this subject. But if you are... If you're in a position where you have seen people hurt and and I'm, I'm going to start and when I said people in their 30s and 40s had a legitimate complaint about having never been seen by the universe it's more people in their 25s and 30s and 45s like that's the 20 year run I want to talk about as having almost been ignored for reasons that they could be assumed to have been swept into the winning situation that we all created before they even got here. Until none of that was true for them. Well, <laughs> so what do you do about that situation? How do you help rectify that huge wrong? Do you go tear down the institutions that limit their capacity to realize what was told them as part of their fulfillment in life's American dream? Or do you support them? Do you find ways to listen to them? To understand what they're going through? And thus compile a grievance list that's valid? I, I can't even, I can think of... I'm not even going to name them. I'm not going to get distracted. But that's... those That range of, of humans has grievances. And they stack up. Hmm. I don't... I don't really like the me that's saying these things because I'm getting angry. But when, when people are being unjustly treated, it's not that you feel for them and thus want to correct what's going on with them. You know that that's affecting you. Like it just, it eats, it eats at all of us. Injustice is not minimal or to be <sighs> left as negligible. There are no injustices. 
that can be lived with. So when you see true injustice, know that your soul is less complete because of it. And until we can find a way to parcel out that which creates these inequalities, these needs to step on others to gain one's footing, these methods of biting back on each other to somehow feel better about ourselves. I mean, where do you want to look? Start living in grace. And not like amazing grace. Lord's grace. I don't know any of that shit. I don't I have no idea what those things are in their actuality. Because I'm not religious. But I do know they exist. Because I'm an American. So what I'm speaking to when it comes to grace is just that when you look at the last 68 minutes of your life, it's not that you were getting from the universe what you were deserving from your actions. It's that you were making the universe a better place. Or at least when given the opportunity to confront a situation that could turn the universe into a better place, you took it. Or that even though it's challenging to keep facing into these headwinds and you don't always succeed, this time you stood up and championed a better universe again. Even if you got knocked out. And you'll be there next month. My point is, all of us looking to do slightly better by ourselves make the whole universe work. But this conundrum we're stuck in now, well, it's a lot like watching your cat die. Not a whole lot of fun. Not a whole lot of fun. Um... Yeah, I'm admittedly one who does lose their train of thought. So, this email, when it came in, I was pretty uh, taken aback. But then when I realized that, well, let's just get to the sender part. And uh, I think it'll all make sense. Dear, it's all my fault. Well, I don't know if it's all your fault, but I know every time you touch your phone, you ruin your fucking recording. So that part's definitely your fault. Signed? Me. Okay. I agree. I'm sorry. It's been awful. And really, while I was sick, I had an excuse. But there is no excuse for anything prior to that or anything going forward. Unless this sickness turns into a manifestation of something bigger. At this level, no. I am unacceptably... I'm unacceptably... <laughs> My behavior is unacceptable. I recognize it. And I will do better. Now... Losing my train of thought? Yeah, okay. I'm coming back in here to finish up on two things. First, the time that I saw the life plan room the, for the first time, it was it was like you knew what you were seeing because you weren't supposed to see it. Or It's not that you're not supposed to see it. It's that you've been told you're, you can't see it until you're ready to... to um, ready to shoulder its responsibilities. And so the first time you see it, you're like, fuck, is that what I think I'm seeing? I didn't even think I was supposed to be able to see that. That's your first reaction. And <clears throat> and I didn't see my life plan room until sometime in, like, I don't know, 2007, maybe? I mean, it was clearly after 9-11. Um, it was pre-Sandy Hook. <laughs> I love how those are two events whereby I determine my... Dream wisdom states. But, so there you go. There's the gap. There's the 11-year gap. I'll let it sit within. And, and so, because you're like, I don't think I'm supposed to be seeing that, you turn away from it. Like, but now you realize you're being brought into an area where there is real uh, coordination and documentation and, um, and, energy flow. And um, I mean, this is when it's almost like when you realize that you now do have access to, to bigger, hmm, bigger isn't the word. Nobody ever holds what you don't know against you. They just assume you'll eventually learn. 
wisdom isn't something that is shepherded as a as an advantage. It's something that everyone gets to. So as you realize that you're getting access to some things that you thought were enabled only to higher selves, well, brain tumor, right? Must be. I mean, I'm fucking crazy. It's got to be. Well, or... No, it's got to be. Wait, 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 wait. I forgot that I had one other thing I want to talk about, and that was, what if all this is me shedding my human skin into my lizard alien slash Arcturian real personage who's going to take over planet Earth or whatever? Like, what if I'm metamorphosizing? Isn't that what? I don't even know. Metamorphosis? What if I'm about to become a butterfly? Could not this be me shedding my skin to become a lizard man? Couldn't it be? What if I go into the dental office tomorrow and they're like, what do you mean? You don't have any broken teeth. As a matter of fact, you all only have fangs. Where are your goddamn human teeth? I'll be like, Ow! biting that dentist's head off. Can't be telling nobody that shit, bro. It's at least possible. <laughs>